Dear friends, this is Dr. Suresh Kumar Bhola. I will like to share with you the treatment of polio and post-polio deformities, post-polio syndrome, my experience of about 20 years. And uh, this is just not a presentation. It is his blessings. And 20 years of faith and surrender of these patients who are suffering from polio and post-polio syndrome. And uh, this is orthopedics beyond the books made in India. Because as most of the knowledge, our operative knowledge comes from the West and because West uh, polio patients are almost not there. So it is our own problem. And we are trying to find out what are the solutions if by the end of this presentation, I could change the perspective of the house regarding what they think of the treatment of polio, the purpose of this presentation is met with. We started this journey from supracondylar osteotrin and applying plaster. Then we shifted to Elizro and hexapod. Why we shifted to Elizro and hexapod? I'll just try to explain to you. Because we need precision in these cases. Second thing, these are not single level deformities. Most of them, they are multiple malorientation, malalignment syndrome. Maybe multiple corrections in the same thing, or both the lower limbs are to be adjusted. Thirdly, the lengthening. Let me explain it. Precision means if with plaster we slightly overcorrect it, you will see this kind of deformity will happen due to recurrent. So, precision is very important in both. If you overcorrect it or undercorrect it, there is more harm which has been the, will be done than any benefit. So you cannot overcorrect or undercorrect, and precision is very important, which cannot be achieved with the help of plaster. Again. You can unknowingly create deformities in another plane. Earlier I showed you, instead of FFD, we had hyperextension. Now I am showing you, instead of correcting FFD, we have created the virus. Might be valgus, might be rotation, because plaster is not a perfect thing to correct the deformities in all the planes with precision. So we had to shift to Elizro or Hexapods. Another thing, polio deformities, they are at multiple levels. Hip might be involved, knee might be involved, foot might be involved. Might be you had to do multiple osteotomies because these are multiple mal-orientation, mal-alignment syndromes, single plaster will not hold multiple osteotomies. And you will need something like Elizro or Hexapod. That's why we shifted to Elizro. In this case, this is a single case, 
in which supracondylar obstruction has been done, soft tissue flexion has been done, lengthening has been done, and also in this case with the so was lengthening or deformities are incorporated into your planning, plaster is insufficient. So I think I have made the things clear that it is precision, multiple level of the deformities, bony and soft tissue, as well as lengthening, which compel, which need Elizro and Multiple of them can be used for supracondylar obstructing, foot ankle, knee, leg, etc. Another thing which with the time we evolved full length X-rays. Earlier only one X-ray we used to do at the most one hip X-ray or supracondylar uh, knee X-ray, a P ten. But for procedure now, we are taking the help of full length X-rays, AP, and more important, lecture. And from that, now we have shifted to 3D CT scan. Why 3D CT scan? So that we can get exact AP and lateral full length profile of the limb to be treated so that we can find out at what level in the limb or in the limbs the pump is present. This is CT scan which will give you exact sagittal plane. Along with that, the antiversion of the femur and rotational studies of the tibia, they can be addressed or looked into with the help of the CT scan. We can get a model of the deformity, 3D model, so that we can really understand at what level the deformities are going on, femur, tibia, knee, and how to resolve. Another thing which we have started is bone ninja, with which we can plan where the obstructions will be happening, if they are multiple or single level, and what will be the and well, and picture. How will we resolve in frontal plane? How will we resolve in skin? And another thing which we have used is hexapod. Hexapod two lines. Hexa means six pod means six. So this instrument is having six rods which are across the straight plane. If we shorten or lengthen, change the length of the rods, the position of the fragments can be placed in desired position relative to each other. The things without hexapod, first you have to detect, then you have to correct the angulation in frontal or sagittal or in oblique plane, then translational devices, then rotational devices. All these things can be done in one go with the help of S in a simple way. To understand more, if there is an end, it wants to go from floor to the roof, first it will travel the floor, then this will travel the wall, then it will go to the desired position in the roof. But if it, if it is west, it will draw a direct trajectory to the desired position. So hexapod is something like that. It will directly virtual hinges are created and all the things, angulation, rotation, distraction, translation in one way. 
So mm-hmm. this saves time. It simplifies the action, and it is less strenuous to the agent. You can appreciate its application in the next few slides. Let's see. <coughs> Sorry, what happens? We many a time come across these patients like this: a young girl who is twenty-four year old. She come, has come, and she says she is deteriorating. Another girl, she says she is having short term as well. Another young boy, he says he is having difficulty in walking, fear of fall during walking, and he is deteriorating day by day. And he thinks he will be on wheelchairs very soon. Another young person, forty-seven years. He also comes for consultation. These are our daily patients, not mine, but one in one or two days in OPDs you will come across this issue most of the time, and he is asking for a walk which is energy action. He gets tired soon now for last eight years. She's with bent knee, hip on the right side. Has never put the floor, foot on the floor. She also comes. She says, "Can you do something?" And I gave. And and I gave with the short one. Can you give length? Almost normal looking, compensated. Is a doctor profession completely known with building hanging lower limb? He wants to leave the stick. And dear friend, he is with calipers. This stick, he wants to get better. He's for fifty nine years. He wants to also get better. These patients they many a times come to our hospital. Okay. What do we do? We advise vitamin D, B12, calcium, and basic physiotherapy, yoga, calcium, therapy. Most of the time, patients will not turn to. And one important question which we have forgotten to ask: Are you deteriorating? Eighty percent of these patients, to my surprise. Once I started asking, they say yes, we are deteriorating, and it is most of the time to the gradual deterioration. And the diagnosis is yes, patient. Dear friend, these patients of post polio syndrome, they will complain that their number of steps they are decreasing. The strength is decreasing. Can I stand for more time? Earlier they were not on hand high gait, but now they are shifting to hand high. They fall down. There is fatigue. There is back pain. They start more bending while walking. And when these patients visit, I advise them surgery. And most of the cases after evaluation of minimum one to two days with. Full length access, and most of the orthopedic opinions they discourage them from undergoing surgery by saying you might deteriorate. Some bodies be pulling you because muscles which must die in polio they cannot be recovered. Do not get operated. We are telling, etc., etc. And uh, yes, they are right. But partially, the muscles which die in polio cannot be recovered. But the bands in the limb they can be corrected. Limbs can be made more functionally aligned to make the gait more energetic. And the benefit of that is the there is increase in the number of steps. Strength also increases 
you can stand for more time and I get my be no more and this is less fatigue. It's functional improvement. The surgery in polio is mainly for functional improvement, not just for looks. They may improve, but pain is if earlier he used to work for two minutes, after the surgery he might be 30 minutes, one hour or something. What is the principle? If the objects they are gravity friendly, they do not need support to stand. You see, lion so powerful, so strong, but it needs support of the man to stand, to can not stand. Because man is gravity friendly, lion's body is not gravity friendly. If anything which is gravity friendly needs no score, to stand. Another concept on important, which I would like to share with you, that foot and ankle deformed this. That most of the apparent, obvious, seen and analyzed by the patient, seen and an analyzed by the public, seen and analyzed by the physician and surgeon, and immediately who rush to treat them. Knee is hidden, but still can be seen from all the sides, like foot and ankle. If extra effort is made, if it's not made, then only would go at the foot and ankle. But before any foot and ankle, especially in poliotic, we must see whether knee is involved or not. If it is almost hidden from the eyes and the mind of both patient and physician, and cannot be seen from all of them. It might be a problem right somewhere there. What I mean to say, let's simplify by this example. She is a 44 year old lady, post polio, left lower limb, with foot and ankle problems, pain on walking. She was operated 15 years back for lengthening in polio to FFD was created by mistake in polio. 15 years back, now has to be resolved. PPTA is 66 on. And walrus. So, precision is very important. It was unknowingly these both the different is there, which is valueless and effective. 15 years back, this last two and a half years she is deteriorating by day, distance to which she could walk in a single go is decreasing, feeling tired on standing, instability on standing and walking with fear of falls and fell once. Pain in the right volume on standing and walking, pain in the right foot on walking and standing. She was referred by a family physician in USA to podiatrist, foot and ankle surgeon, and everybody focused on the foot and ankle and advised surgery for them. Then they shifted to their parent institution in Baltimore. They if something can be done for them. And then also she was advised to tell them. And 
day later on consult. They were advised to consult Dr. Anil Bhav, senior physiotherapist. They said instead of consulting the physiotherapist, why not come to India where polio is cases are in large number and might be there some different <laughs> They came to me and I found the broad heel with zero TA power. There is equidness. There is started looking proximally. There was FFD of the knee. Still proximally. There was FFD of the hip. You can appreciate this now. Then full length access. They were done and we found that 10 degrees of FFD is there. 10 degree of FFT is there in polio ship system of Two year test. As well as me, Valga Swartian. Both of these things happen by length at the TPR while only and only focusing on the length issue without addressing. The angles which got changed in the proximal joint means knee. A CT scan was done for alignment and how much antiversion is there and supracondylar osteotomy with Elizero and Hesapol was done to correct the knee. You see, the heel is now touching the ground. Earlier, the foot problems are mainly because she was mainly bearing the forefoot. Now she is bearing the foot uh, weight while walking on whole of the foot. The benefits they were, he started touching, on standing and walking, fully plantigrade foot was there, knee was locking, both the lower limbs taking equal loading on standing and walking. It is locking also on standing and walking. Other limb is not in pain while walking and standing. Foot and ankle pain has disappeared. Lengthening in polio should not be taken lightly. And before going, any surgical intervention, especially in polio, take, must look and resolve proximally. Let's take another example. Polio deformity correction, another of all the deformity corrections. Multiple lower limb joints they are in. Maybe both sides are in there. Muscles are also in there. No research, no literature. It's a dynamic worsening. Post polio syndrome. It's a non glamorous job. Nobody wants to listen in the conferences. And he's a doctor by profession. He wants to leave the stick hanging with it. Muscle champion, along with the full length x ray, 3D CT scan, and found hip. Eye, knee, leg, at bone, joints, soft tissue, muscles, they were involved. Part of the deformity was tested actively and test correctly. Flexible vector release was done, lateral potential nerve was released, hamstring fever release, as well as supracondylar osteotomy was done, intertocentric osteotomy was done, and the deformities they were corrected. With the help of head support at multiple levels, and this is the clinical picture after three months. This is the intertrochanticle. This is supraconductive. Limb has been aligned in full extension. Knee is there, and uh, he's walking without any speed, without any caliper or any kind of specialized gear. This is one year after the surgery. And dear friends, you now cannot recognize 
who out of these five doctors is suffering from polio while they are standing? Another case which will, I will like to share with you is a polio tick, 28 years old, who suffered fracture of the femur. You can plate it, nail it, traction, spike, anything. But I knew he is a polyotic and he is having deformity in the knee, flexion deformity. So I did in the same period in which the fracture is to be united. I also created another supracranial osteotomy to correct the FF2 and with the Eliso and Hesapa corrected both fracture as well as the deformity. These things are not possible with plaster or any other. This is hexapod for the fracture, which is aligned in both the planes. This is what hexapod, in which the yellow ones are the initial bone fragment pictures, and red ones are what you want to do with them. In this case, we wanted yellow fragment in the lateral view, FFT correction, and directed the tax support calculation and corrected the deformity. So, in the three months, we corrected both structure as well as the deformity. And five kids. As well as anti gate. In this patient is very comfortable with Elizro on. If the hand is off the thigh while the Elizro is on, it will be off the thigh once it is in. You can correct at this stage any various valves, titration, or to get the bone if you 15 years before she came to me with hanging lower limb and uh, you can see her gait there's no stick there's no caliper or shoes this is before and after the treatment in this we did soft tissue corrections we did intracranitic osteotomy we did supracondylar osteotomy we did high tibial osteotomy to length so all the things combined, she is almost normal looking day, but we convert it into a more energy efficient. Is a doctor by profession anti gate. Anti gate was removed as well as lengthening was done, but we had the same supracranial. So we are combining PCM. We are combining osteotomy. For lengthening is another 15 years after. You see, hardly any muscle is there which can be transferred from one area to another. Another 13 years after the surgery, and hardly any muscle was there which could be transferred, just bony alignment. And uh, 12 years after the surgery, no calipers, no, no shoes. Anti gate in you know, a BV's person 15 years before we did this. Another 15 years before anti gate. 14 years before anti gate. 38 year female with gate corrections and anti was removed. You see, with Elizro and her support patient is comfortable walking. And still, we can change the parameters depending upon the functional status of the patient. Also, oh, is an obese person anti gay? Uh, 10 years after the anti gay, is four months after the surgery, 
four years after the surgery, hence I gave. He's walking without sleep, but still calipers are there. That the calipers with the deformities and calipers without deformities, they are entirely different. Genu recurvatum, five years after the surgery. You see, genu recurvatum is very disabling, much worse than even FFT. And uh, she has to take the sport of the wall, if you clearly see in the uh, pre operative. But after the surgery, the knee has been affected. Another anti treated earlier. And still, there is a, a gene where, along with slight recurvatum, this is from five months after the surgery, sweer gene recurvatum. This is the same lady, 15 years. This is a put. He came from Tanzania, put in mental surgery was done three years after that. Surgery. This is foot and ankle surgery one year after. She is a polyotic in which the whole of the lower limb along with the foot was addressed. And uh, another hanging lower limb before and after. No caliper, no shoes, no stick. I'm really happy to share with you this patient who came for treatment from United Kingdom and went happily after the treatment. She used to use crutches in both the upper limbs. This is four months after the surgery. The patient most of the time stays with me three to four months and after that the satisfactory discharge of this patient is just like the die of a girl from their parental home, Armaika. This is what my wife says, and I fully agree with this. Keeping a patient indoor for three to four months is another game, not so easy. The same once she sent the pictures from her house. And we, in this case also, we do CT scans as well as full length X-rays. This is another girl. Both the low limbs are hanging. And uh, you can see she can walk. Only one side has been operated. Another side is yet to be operated. And it is not possible without his causeless Kindness. A car and a She was almost on bed and one surgery changed her life. This is four years after the surgery. So, dear friend, deformity corrections of the polyotic lower limb revolves around addressing correction in frontal, dental, and horizontal planes by hip inter trochanticosteotomy. Osteotomy is around the knee, supracondylar, HTO, supramalleolar osteotomy, osteotomy is and fusions of the foot, along with soft tissue surgeries of the lower limb or the other limb. Carry home messages, polio, post polio syndrome, they are very commonly seen, mostly neglected, undiagnosed, untreated entity but it can be treated. We say polio has been eradicated, but you see the corridor which is almost empty. There are post-polio diseases. There is post-polio syndrome cases. They all need treatment from hip to toes by soft tissues or surgeries with elastro and have support. They need the benefit. Please listen to them in future. Guide them, encourage them persons. 
we can change their life. You can change their life. Post pollution these cases are prevalent. And dear friends, I'm highly thankful to you who have spare time and undergone this video study. And I'm also highly thankful to all these patients, their families who have deposed faith in me to get treated. This is orthopedic beyond books, it's made in India, 